Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the Geodynamics video lectures on brittle deformation and faulting. Here in lecture number four on this topic, we're going to talk about the Moore Coulomb criterion, and this is part one of a two part lecture on this topic. Our main goals for the lecture are to introduce the Moore Coulomb criterion and its mathematical definition. It's not that complicated. We've already seen most of the parts, in fact. And then we'll talk about its common representation as a Moore circle, which is probably something you've already seen if you've taken a structural geology course. This is commonly taught in structure. Now, what we have seen previously, this relationship between the shear stress, the frictional coefficient, and the normal stress is something that is referred to as Amatin's law. And the problem with Amatin's law is that it doesn't take into account rock cohesion. And so if you took a chunk of granite at the surface of the earth today and you had very little normal stress, you wouldn't expect simply to begin to shear the rock just because you have this relationship um, between the shear stress, friction coefficient, and normal stress. Of course, the rock has its intrinsic cohesion, its ability to hold itself together, and you have to overcome that cohesion before you can begin to have frictional slip within the rock. And so if we modify our relationship that we had here and simply add in this term C, that's the cohesion of the rock, then we can call this the Coulomb criterion, in which case now we have a relationship between the shear stress the frictional coefficient times the normal stress, and then the intrinsic cohesion in the rock that uh, must be overcome as well. This relationship um, that is basically uh, straight from the Coulomb criterion can be plotted in a rather elegant way um, as a Moore circle. And so what we'll do now is kind of step through the things that are shown on this plot, including the failure envelope, cohesion, and internal angle of friction. All of these different parameters are graphically illustrated here in this uh, Moore circle diagram. To get us oriented, it's first important to note that on the vertical axis here we have shear stress, and on the horizontal axis we have normal stresses, and so what we can plot here as the uh, straight line there, now highlighted in orange, is the failure envelope or the failure um, criterion. This is the predicted rock strength that is uh, based on its frictional strength. And so this is simply a line plotting the relationship between the shear stress, cohesion plus the frictional coefficient times the normal stress, and that just plots as a line here. That gives us our frictional strength of the rock at a value of zero for the um, normal stress. We can see here the cohesion that's indicated with the letter C. And so this straight line then would be indicating how the rock strength will increase as normal stress increases and then here at zero normal stress would be the intrinsic strength in the rock or the cohesion. The other thing that is plotted on here is the internal angle of friction. This is basically the angle that's formed between the line for our uh, relationship between the shear and normal stresses and the, um, the horizontal uh, which is just the, the excess of the normal stress. And so this angle here the, is commonly um, referred to as the internal angle of friction. It's a material property, and, uh, and the Greek letter phi is um, what's used. You could see then here the relationship between this coefficient of friction and phi that's shown here. So the coefficient of friction fs is simply the tangent of the angle phi. So that is basically how we can plot the information about the, um, the relationship between the normal and shear stresses, the frictional strength of the rock. The other thing that can be shown on here is a circle. And so we can take the state of stress 
in a given rock and plot it as a circle on this diagram. And so the things that we're using to plot this um, are the principal stresses. So sigma one is here, sigma three is here, and the circle then is defined as a diameter of the difference between sigma one and sigma three. So sigma one minus sigma three will determine the diameter of this circle. Of course, since it's a circle and it intersects these two points, then you can plot the thing just like that. And the kind of elegance of this type of representation is that for a given stress state in the rock, if this circle intersects the frictional strength of the rock, then we can predict that failure would occur in the rock. And if it does not intersect this straight line that represents the frictional strength, then we would have no uh, failure. And so in this case, you can see that we're just tangent to that line, we're just intersecting it, and um, then the failure is going to occur uh, at a critical shear stress, which is here, tau fs. And so that's going to be this dashed line here, the point at which the rock strength circle intersects the frictional strength line on this diagram. And if this is unclear, again, I'd suggest go back and step through the, the last few um, slides here and see if uh, if you can't make sense of it. If you're still confused, of course, you can always ask questions in the quiz or in the next time we have class. Okay, so that was our first part about the Moore Coulomb criterion. And when we come back in the next video lecture, we're going to talk about the applications and some of the additional kind of information that we can take off of that diagram uh, in the More Coulomb Criterion Part 2 video lecture. For now, it's time for your quiz, and I'll see you for the next one.